In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about arrays. What is an array, you ask? Well, according to the internet, an array is a data structure consisting of a collection of elements. It's not very descriptive, so we're going to go a little deeper into it. Um, an array in C is used to store a contiguous grouping of variables that are the same size and the same type. So to, the best way to think about an array in C is a group of boxes like this. Um, the boxes are contiguous, which means that there's no gaps in between them. You know, they're all next to each other with no holes. Um, and the boxes are all the same size and the same type. So the first one is the same size as the last one. Um, so for example, if I needed to make a variable in C to track a long list of integers, the way that I would do this is to make an integer array. So the way that I would do this is I would type int, which is the type held by the array, then the name of the array as tracked by the compiler, and then a hard open parenthesis. And that notation with the hard parenthesis means that we're dealing with an array type. And then inside of that parenthesis is the number of elements you want in your array, right? And this is when you're doing statically sized allocations. You finish with a hard closed parenthesis and then a semicolon. And what the compiler does with that is it creates room on the stack for six integers. So that's gonna be four per integer times six, so 24 bytes to hold whatever numbers you want. So in this case, I did 66, 44, et cetera. Um, so let's actually get into the code and write some code that creates statically and dynamically sized arrays in C. Let's get into it right now. All right, so we're in Linux. We got our coding environment all set up here. Um, if you haven't seen my tutorials on writing your first Hello World program in C or the pointer tutorial that I did in C, you're gonna be a little lost in the syntax here. But if you have seen those or you're a little experienced in C, uh, stick around, we're gonna dive into arrays right now. So we're gonna talk about two different kinds of array allocations. Um, the first we're gonna do is a statically sized array allocation. And statically sized means you say how big the array is going to be in your code directly, and that gets determined at compile time, which means every time your program runs, the array is that big. There's no way to change it. So the way we do that is just like what we saw before, where we say int my array, a hard parenthesis, the number of elements you want in it, and a closed parenthesis, semicolon. And that's it. We can actually compile our code here. Uh, we'll do GCC, GCC, tac o, arrays, and I name my code arrays.c. And then we can run our code and we get no compile errors. That's not very cool, right? We, we allocated some array, but we don't do anything with it. So let's actually print off our array. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is with a for loop. So we'll create a for loop by doing the following syntax. We'll declare a counter variable with i, and we'll start our for syntax. So for i is equal to zero, while i is less than five, and five is the number of elements in our array, right? Uh, i plus plus. And then for every iteration of that loop, we're going to print something. Uh, we're gonna do percent %d colon percent %d backslash n. That first d is gonna be our counter, just so we know where in the array we are. And then we're gonna introduce some new syntax here, which is called an array access. When we wanna access into our array, we type the name of the array, and then similar to the declaration, we access with hard parentheses and then the element number we want to access. And in this case, we wanna access the ith element. And what that'll do is as i increases, right? i starts at zero, access is zero with element. i goes up to one, two, three, four, you access the first, second, third, fourth element, and so on. And you close your, your, uh, your statement here, and then you end your, your for loop. Then if we compile this and we run it, we should get, so the first two make sense, but the second two, or the second three, I guess, are actually kind of a, uh, a programming mistake. We didn't specify a default value for our array. What actually happens here is we get somewhat of a memory leak. We can actually change this value to percent %p for pointer, recompile it and run it, and these values are, actually I'm not sure what they are. Either way, they're memory that we aren't supposed to see. We, the user, weren't meant to be uh, revealed to in our program. We'll put this back to a D. But the way that we clean this up 
is we can specify a default value for our array with the following syntax. We say int my array of five is equal to curly bracket, the default value, which you always want to set yourself to zero unless you have another predetermined default value. And then you close your parentheses. And we're going to save it and run it. Good. Now, instead of getting memory leaked to us that we shouldn't have seen in the first place, we get all this clean zero values for our brand new ver uh, variable, right? Now to set the variable to things, we can do my array of one is equal to, um, let's see, one, three, three, seven. And we can do my array of four is equal to 4096. 4096. We're just gonna copy this code and put it back here. Remember not to grab the declaration of I because you don't wanna declare it twice, the compiler will yell at you. Uh, and then we're going to compile and run our code. So this is the first iteration, right? We set the variable equal to zero, or we set the array equal to zero. Um, and then in the second iteration, we set some variables equal to some stuff and we printed them. Pretty cool, right? Not that hard. So like I said before, this is a statically sized array allocation. Every time you run this program, no, what, no matter what, the array will always be five, no matter what you do. And you can't change it at runtime because it happens in the creation of the stack for the program. Another way to do array allocations, we'll delete everything but us viewing the array, is with this syntax. So instead of this, where you use your hard parenthesis and that sets the size, we're gonna set the size of the array a different way. We're gonna make an int pointer called my array, and it's gonna be equal to, and this is where it gets a little different, instead of pulling memory from the stack, which is what our previous allocation did, we're going to pull memory from the heap. And the heap allows us to do things dynamically where we can change the number of elements we have in our array at any given time during runtime as composed to at compile time. malloc. So what malloc does, and we have to make sure we include standard lib.h, which is where malloc comes from. malloc is memory alloc. And this is actually the function in libc that asks the memory allocator, hey, can we have some memory? We need to do things with it. And the argument to malloc is the amount of memory you would like to allocate, right? And the amount of memory we want to allocate, when we let's let's make this a five element int array. The amount of memory you need to allocate, you need to specify in bytes. The question then becomes how many bytes is a five element integer array? Well, some basic math will tell us that it's the size of, and that's actually a macro in C, size of an int times the number of elements we want, right? Because if int has some size, and in this case, it's actually four, four times five, so 20 bytes is the amount of bytes we need to ask from the allocator to create our array. And so this will work and give us back memory um, and then the access and the setting and the reading of the array is actually the exact same syntax. This is actually an array dereference of a pointer, but you can do that on pointers the same way you can do it on arrays. So this will have the exact same effect and we can compile it and run it. Oh, I forgot to declare I, unfortunate. So we'll clear this. Cool, so we have allocated some memory from the heap how we have a pointer to it, and then we treat that pointer like an array, and now we're reading the memory that lives in the heap, which is actually set by default, well, at, at this point in our program, to zero, right? Pretty cool. And we'll do the same thing as before, just prove to you that accesses and sets are the same with dynamically allocated arrays. All right, so we'll set some values, copy the code, and we'll compile and run and we'll view it like that. Anyway, guys, that's about all I have for arrays. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, drop a like, hit subscribe. I put out content like this every week, and uh, keep on learning. Have a good night. Bye-bye.